确实，在中国这个你如果同时有名，同时有利，你会非常非常危险的。Wang Xiu is a celebrity entrepreneur in China. He's the head of Vanka, the world's largest home builder by sales. He's also climbed Mount Everest twice and studied at Harvard and Cambridge after he turned 60. He has a starlet girlfriend, 30 years his junior. And he was different from many first-generation entrepreneur peers who were ousted from their companies or jailed. Wang has carefully navigated the tricky relationship with the Chinese government, which controls access to capital, land, and regulatory enforcement. But after decades of success, today he faces the biggest threat in his career. His largest shareholders have challenged his leadership, and he might lose control of the empire he has created. All through his life, Wang has had an ambivalent relationship with the Chinese government. Born the son of a military officer, Wang started his career working for the state, joining the army during Mao's Cultural Revolution. In the early 1980s, he was among the first wave of Chinese who quit the government to start their own businesses. In 1984, he founded a company to trade pig feed and eventually expanded it into the world's biggest home builder by sales. Wang embraced Western management ideas like transparency and accountability. Former and current executives say he is respected and feared by his employees. You do what? What thing? You are not nice to look at me. You want to do what? For over three decades, Wang kept himself in step with the government. In 1988. When state-owned Vanka became a shareholding corporation, Wang took almost no shares for himself. Experts say that despite all their wealth and power in the business world, the biggest weakness for Chinese business people is their limited influence on politics. I觉得中国这些企业家的在民间的话语权和社会给他们的公众的美誉度和他们的影响力都足够大 At times, Wang has had run-ins with the government. He disavowed his Communist Party membership after the government crushed the student-led demonstrations in Tiananmen Square in 1989. A person familiar with the situation says he was detained for nearly a year after helping smuggle Tiananmen activists to Hong Kong. Wang has declined to confirm his detention. But other times, he sought a closer relationship with the government, hoping to seek safety as his business expanded. In 2000, he sold shares to a state-owned enterprise, China Resources, that made it Vanka's biggest shareholder. He was betting that if Vanka kept growing, the Chinese leadership would feel more comfortable to have it controlled by a state-owned enterprise. But today, things aren't going as Wang had hoped. The state-owned giant stood by as an upstart property and insurance company, Baoneng, became Vanka's largest shareholder. China Resources also sided with Baoneng against one proposal from Vanka's board. The two companies have challenged Mr. Wang's leadership. Wang didn't respond to recent requests for comment. Vanka, Baoneng and China Resources declined to comment. Meanwhile, Wang keeps in touch with fallen tycoons who have endured difficult times. As China's economy grew rapidly, many businessmen tried to seize opportunities because regulations were patchy and enforcement was haphazard, and they ran afoul of authorities. He says this is a reminder that however successful he may be now, he could one day fall on hard times. One friend is 88-year-old Chu Shijian, known as China's tobacco king in the 1980s and 1990s. He received a life sentence in 1998 on charges of embezzling $600,000.
then was released seven years later for medical reasons. He now operates a successful orange orchard. Wang says Chu's experience brings to mind the words of the World War II general George Patton.